My name is John Edward Shea. It's J-O-H-N-E-D-R-E-D-S-H-E-A. What is your birthday? My birthday is 12-30-30. You're born right after the Great Depression. Yeah. Generations of Great Depression. Yep. Where were you born? I was born in uh, Providence. And tell me about your family and your siblings when you were growing up. I had a brother and a sister. Mm -hmm. My brother served in the Second World, World War under General Patton. He was a tank driver. My sister, uh, she worked and she worked for Narragansett Electric with my brother. How about your parents? My, my parents, my mother was worked on at different dinner parties for this here. There was, was a rich family and she used to work for them. And the family, all the pens, it was three or four different members of the family that she would Work. They would have a dinner party, and she would ser like serve the table and clear the table and stuff like that. That's all. That's what my mother did. Mm. My father was a mechanic for Mobile Oil. At that time, they called it the Standard Oil of New York. Uh -huh. That was the original uh, name then. My father was the first diesel mechanic in Rhode Island. There could have been other men around, I don't know what they said he was the first. And New York had diesel, Rhode Island did not have any diesel trucks at all. Huh. They were just coming out. And my father went to New York for a month. He was a night foreman for, for mobile here in Rhode Island. Or in those days it was a standard oil so didn't Great Depression really affect negatively your family? I don't really know. They, were, they had to be involved in it somehow. I was born after the, the, the uh, Depression. But still, there were a lingering impact of Great Depression oh, yes. upon so many people. Yeah. But because your father had a great job, right? So well, my father was just a mechanic originally. Right. And then he worked his way up the foreman. Mm -hmm. And he used to work nights. Because at nights during the day, most of the trucks would be on the road uh, delivering gas, and they do most of the repairs at night. Got it. Tell me about the school you went through. I went to uh, Clary School. That was a grammar school. And that was named after Father Clary. And we were in St. Joseph's Parish. And they used to, the original name used to be St. Joseph's Clary School. Mm -hmm. That was the original name. And we just called it Clary because every, all our papers we had to put down Clary School on. Then I went up to Hope High School for three years. And I graduated from them. So that's 1950? 1950. Yeah. And how did you come to know about the Korean War? I get drafted. When? Oh. 1951, I think it was. I went in. I was in for two years. So did you know anything about Korea before you were drafted? No. You didn't? Well, I heard, I heard of the country. Yes. How? Tell me. And, and the news and stuff like that. I knew about the country. I knew we went to war there, and uh, I knew we had troops there. That uh, the, uh, I knew when Japan was there, and and that uh, I think the first part of the career was when the. Um, didn't they take one of our ships, the North Koreans? Yeah, in in eight nineteenth centuries, 
You're yeah. talking about the one, 19th yeah, century? That was just before the war. They ju the, uh, Not just before the war, but it was 19th century, the black ship by the, the Commodore yeah. Perry was abducted and burned yeah. down there. And then mm -hmm. Americans attacked again in, eight, you know. And in that's what we call the first. 1950. We went in in 1950. Yes. So you were drafted, and where did you get the basic military training? Down at Camp Gordon, Georgia. Oh. What kind? Signal. Signal. Tell me about it. What did you learn? Morse code? Well, I, I was in Boy Scouts, and I could do flags, and, and uh, I knew, knew how to flag. And when I knew how to flag, they'd try to get me on radio and everything. And, and that uh, I was mediocre. Mm. Then I got there, just sent me through basic. And then I went to Korea. And that uh, there was this colonel. When did you arrive Korea? I arrived in Korea was... I forget, September, around well, September. 1951. Yeah, I came home in 52, I spent the year in. So it must uh, be. 53, 53, I got there 52. 52 September? September 52. Where did you July. arrive in Korea? I went in through uh, where the capital was. I so came up the west coast. Incheon. Incheon. You landed in Incheon? Landed in Incheon. And then go the, to... The capital was completely destroyed and everything. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the first scene of capital city. My first scene was at the capital. We went in there. And we were backing up the troops to... Uh, to break up the, uh, to help break up the, um, the China supply line that was going down. That uh, we went in that way. And that's what we were, we were just stationary at first. And then we went further north. They opened up a base further north and they put in a message center there. And I worked out in a message center. As a messenger? I can't say. Mm. What, what was your unit? Do you remember? 10th Corps. 10th Corps. And that's it? 10th Corps message center. And what was your rank? My rank, book private. <laughs> Private. I had no rank whatsoever. I didn't get any rank till I came back to the States. Hmm. Because they wanted me, uh, well, can't say. Tell me about more, more description about the soul that you saw. How bad was it? Everything was wiped out. The capital was wiped out and everything. It went right by the capital. And it was all destroyed. What were you thinking, seeing all those things? We was at war. And that was it. See, see, my brother was in the Second World War, and I went to see different war movies and everything else. And you you got there, and you seen what war did to the, uh, like, he, he was over in Europe, and you see, see what war done over there to France and Europe and everything else. And you saw the same thing in, uh, in, uh, in Korea. You just took it, you took it for granted that was war. What were you thinking? That I was there to do my job, and that was it. Do you know why you were there? Yeah, to try and free the Korean people. How was Korean people that you saw? 
the Korean people had never really got involved with personally with too many Korean people, to be honest with you. But uh, I got there, and I can remember when we could drive down the road and everything when we pushed them back into North Korea. And I was stationed up in North Korea. And all the farmers used to be out there, and I can remember the old honey buckets. <laughs> you laugh about them, but it's true. Yep. You know? Yep. And how they used to be out there, and and the farmers used to, used to be there in the fall. They used to bring their lumber back down home and, and nail it to the, the house that they lived at at home in South Korea. They would nail the wood so nobody would steal their wood. So they would have it, be able to take it back up north wherever their, their rice paddies were. Mm -hmm. And and those guys, I can, I can remember those guys and, and those rice paddies. The guys, they'd be there all day long working. Yep. Do you, have you been back to Korea? I wasn't back at all. At all. But do you know what happened to Korea now? Do you uh, know how Korean economy is? Yes, I know that the, uh, the back on the, well, I was in North Korea before I came home. And they was moving us back. And back to the uh, 38 power law. And uh, we were much further north than that. I'm going to ask about that, but I want to. I want you to tell me about knowledge of your knowledge about modern Korea right now, Korean economy, Korean democracy, and so on. For, for what I read, is that the uh, Korean people, the southern part of Korea. I think the people are doing well for themselves. They earned it, and they're working for it, and everything else. Now, on a North Korean. I feel sorry for the people on the North Korean. It just seems like the capital is the only one that's surviving there. Those are the only people that's really working is the people that's got involved with the, uh, with the capital. Those are the only ones. The other pe poor people, they're starving. What they could grow or whatever. Mm -hmm is what they're living on. That's, that's all I actually know about it, to be honest with you. Anything that, that I read, we had that book that, uh, in fact, I got at home, that Korean book I read, the, uh, I guess it was printed in Korea. And the half of it is about the war. The first half is about the war, and the second half is about all the new business. It, this is all South Korea. So it's a full of pictures, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a reborn Korea, isn't it? Reborn. Yeah, Korea reborn. reborn. Korea. Yeah. Korea reborn. And you were able to see the pictures before yeah. the war, during the war, and after yep, the war, right? The capital, the capital city, yeah. There must have been 50,000 people there when they was having the, um, uh, what was Olympics? it? Olympics? They were having the matches, for, uh, soccer matches or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they uh, showed all the, all the women and everything lined up down the street, that's all you could see was people. And they were all dressed up and they all looked beautiful. So what do you see this contrasting picture? What do you think about this thing? I think the people worked for it. You've got to give them credit. And I give them credit because they're making our automobiles, they're doing oil, they're doing, they're doing just about everything. They're working for it. They're taking away, they're taking away from the culture of just uh, rice paddies. And honey bucket. And honey buckets. They're taking away from that. What is the credit that you want to give to yourself? To myself? Yeah, about that. The only credit I give to myself, I was there to do a job and I done what I was told. You're too modest. No. 
we were able to build that nation because you fought for us and you gave us chance to, to rebuild our nation. You people deserve a lot of credit. You people are the one, all that we did, in my opinion, is drive, the, um, drive them out of South Korea. You people are the one that uh, rebuilt South Korea. You people deserve the credit because you lived with nothing and you made something out of nothing. But we were not able to do it if you didn't fought for us. Well, you would have been under Chinese rule. All that we did is what we had to do. Then we pulled back to the 38. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your routine service during your stay, stationing in Korea. Well, I, I was a messenger and just routine stuff. Like what? Routine stuff like what a messenger would do. Drop this off there, here, drop that off there. Did you walk or did you ride? I walked. Walked? Well, everything was inside. Of the compound? Of, of the compound. Where in Seoul or where? Oh, this is up in North Korea. Up in North Korea? North Korea, yes. That was 10th Corps. 10th Corps, so Tenth you... 10th Corps headquarters, I was at. Yeah, you arrived September of 1952, and you left when? When did you leave Korea? I left in uh, 53 in the end of May. 53 or 54? 53. You signed the peace treaty in July of 53. Right, so I left just before we signed, well, we didn't, we signed, it, I'm wrong. We signed a ceasefire in 53. So when and you say that you were in North Korea, that was very close to 38 parallel, right? Not, not really deep in North Korea. No, it was actually North Korea we were up. Hmm. I, I forget what towns. But you don't. We're, you don't remember. We're up on the right hand side, and and the um, they were on the left hand side. The yeah. enemy. Was it west or east? Uh, if you look at the map, I would say say the right side was east because that's where where yeah. the water was. Yeah. So I was up on the east side, but we were over on the side there. Yep. And we had a message center up mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Was it dangerous mission? Could be. Tell me if if there I were didn't any. go no hand to hand. I did not go any hand to hand fighting. Mm -hmm. I was armed. I was di in fact I was double armed. I carried a rifle and, and I carried a handgun. Mm -hmm. Normally, the private doesn't carry a handgun, right? Normally, no. No. So, were you able to write letters back to your family or I friends? Used to write, I used to write to my mother and write to my girlfriend. Girlfriend, tell me about what you write. Unless this is another secret. <laughs> See, that's, wh that's what I'm up against. Because I swore that I would never reveal. No, I'm talking about the letter that you the wrote. The letter right? yeah. I wrote to my wife. She oh, was you were married? Girl. No, I wasn't married then. But I was engaged to her. Mm -hmm. And that I went to... Uh, I went to my mother-in-law and asked my mother-in-law about giving her a ring for... For, for her birthday, because I would leave in June and her birthday was in July. Mm -hmm. And that uh, they get there and her father always came home for lunch because he worked just down the street in the mills. He was a textile chemist. 
And she got there, and, and uh, I asked him about giving her a ring and everything else, and my mother, he said it was perfectly all right. And he says, under one condition, and she says, that you wait till you come back from Korea to get married. Hmm. But he wanted to give her a ring, but make it her choice. If she wants it for her birthday, I'll wait until she comes back from Korea. Mm -hmm. So I got there, and I said to her, would you like the ring? And I brought it out of my pocket, and I showed it. She said, you bought me a ring? I said, yeah. And then she looks at it. You bought me a ring? <laughs> she asked me twice. I said, yes. And she got there, and that, uh, she put out a hand. She said, well, put it on my finger. Hmm. So I put the ring on. And then we got married. I got out of the Army on 11th of November. We got married on the, uh, the 26th of November. 1953. Must have been very hard for you to be separated from your fiancé. Yes and no. If I had time, yes. If I didn't have time, if I was busy doing something, mm -hmm. there'd be no because you got your mind on, on what you have to do. You stayed there, you, you fought there, you, you carried a very important mission, you know, carrying those secret messages to each other within your compound. And you coming back, the country that you remember and the country that now is completely different. What do you think about this? Someday I'd love to go back, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I'd love to go back to, just to see the country. Yeah. You know about what's happening in Korea there, right? Yes. Yeah, what do you think about the whole thing? I, I feel sorry for you people because uh, for an honest answer, I still think that North Korea is going to try and overtake South Korea. Yeah. My personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Not wishing them uh, any bad luck to go to war because war is hell. Yeah. And if you were involved with it, you would take and know what it, what it is. But like I say, I feel sorry for the people. You know that Korean government has a program called Revisit Korea. I know that, and I talked to uh, uh, I talked to a di couple of different guys about going going over. That uh, if, uh, if they got a program that if I paid my flight over, that you live for. 10 days or something for nothing in Korea. After World War II, U.S. has involved about a dozen war, including yes. very limited. But well, it was strictly Korea. Yep. That's why I think we need to learn more about Korea. And I want our young generations to learn more about the Korean War. Yes, I agree with you. But do you know our history textbook really tells about Korea or not? I would say it gives you a good idea of Korea. It don't tell everything that's going on, no. It has very short coverage, one paragraph to maximum a page. Compared yeah. to the Vietnam War, it's just one third of it. Yes. And I, the history textbook doesn't tell about modern Korea at all. See, I never bothered looking through, uh, you know, history book on it to be honest with you, that uh, all I read was a book that uh, you people printed up. I was in charge of uh, part of the books, and I put, uh, I put a couple in the East Barnes Library. What are the things that you vividly remember out of your service, and what are the final message that you want to leave to this interview? What I remember, I can remember the showing. 
I could remember the, uh, what I never forgot was the rain. That foolish rain would come and it's raining. You, you hit the sack at night and it's raining just as hard the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> the monsoon. The monsoon. Yeah. I can remember the monsoon and I can remember the freezing. Mm. I had, um, what actually happened is that there was a colonel and he couldn't start the Jeep. And it was, uh, I don't know, say 10, 10 below zero. And he's over there and he's pumping the gas and pumping the gas. And I said, I was on guard duty. And I said, you never start it like that. He said, do you think you can start this? I says, I don't know, but you've got a swimming pool in there with gasoline. <laughs> I said, I can smell it. So I get there and... And I start playing with just the, you know, the starter, you know. And then I get there, and when I get the gas pumped out, and I didn't kill the battery or anything, I got it where it would click a couple of times, and then it would, uh, like, stall out, you know, flood itself out. Then I got it where it started. And he says to me, he's, he says, don't go too far. So he's seen the sergeant. He says to the sergeant, he says, have this man stay over in this area. Don't put him <laughs> over back. Because we used to be broken up in half. We, we have like the inner guard, and then out further was the outer guard. And I never went out of guard anymore. I stood in a guard right, right near the uh, headquarters. Are you proud of your service? Yes. About the Korean War? Well, I didn't do any hand-to-hand -hand fighting, but I am proud of uh, what I did do. I am, yes, I put on that uniform and I walked the walk. <laughs> any other message to this interview that you want to leave with? Again, I feel sorry for the Korean people of which down the road of my opinion. I don't know I could be 100% 100, 100 wrong, which I hope I am, but I still think there's going to be a day when North Korea is going, yeah. going to want to take, in, uh, take over the South again because they're running out of money up North. Now, that's my opinion of what I read, and uh, that's all, all I do know to be honest with you. You're right. You're right. Yeah, it's very unfortunate that our country is still divided and North Korea is suffering from yep. brutal dictatorship. Yeah. So that's why I think and it's important. North Korea, I mean, you got tons of people who lives down north, but the other part of their family lives north. That's right. And they're going, and they can't get them anything. Anything they send, the North Koreans grab. Mm-hmm. Thank you, John. Again. Okay. Thank you.